Okay, so hello everybody. So I will uh, today try to present the work I did with Philippe Leroux for the composition of his last piece entitled Quid Sit Musicus. And so we worked also with uh, Gilles Bernino, a computer music designer at IRCAM. So I will talk for them, but don't ask me too much on the compositional aspects. I will be more interested into the process of interacting with unwritten content and how we work with the composers and what interactive notation can bring to composers who co-adapt patches in their work process. So a brief overview of the project. It was a piece mixing medieval music with the existing piece from the composer and new music composed from uh, rewriting over an old manuscript. So that's the original manuscript taken from the National Library in France, which is an old illuminated manuscript for a medieval score by Machaut. And so the composer was really interested in those graphical shapes. You could see here that the extract excerpts we use for the piece. <coughs> and in particular, he was interested by the shapes and the, the thickness of the forms, their location. And he was really interested in reusing the graphism as a new material for composition and the position of those shapes rather than just using the music itself, the notes, and he, he really thought that there were more data in the writing itself, so rather than just the notation. So we decided to work on, on that project. I will just quickly show a demonstration now. So please interrupt me at any time if it's not clear what I'm saying. Let me find what works. So we use a technology called interactive paper, which I will demonstrate now. So I have a regular piece of paper and a digital pen, and I will write with it. So as you could see, I just written here and I can capture what I'm writing in real time and send it to the computer. So how does this work? That's the next slide. So that's a really simple and smart technology that associates. Uh, so in fact, you have two things. On paper, you, have, you print a pattern of dots here. And on the pen, you have a camera in the, in the tip. And so by filming this pattern of dots, the pen is able to locate precisely on where is it and what are the pen tip movements. So that's a commercial project uh, here. This technology is done by Anoto. So basically, the, they can create a vast amount of surface, which is unique. And then we should divide it into pages or books or whatever you want or components. So that's what we used with the composer. And this is an excerpt of a video of him working. And basically, we printed those scores and he rewrite over the existing ones so that he could kind of get uh, the gestural data of writing the shapes. So obviously, here, the way he wrote was to circling the shapes. So it's really different from the calligraphy originally used, where you have the inclination of the pen that will control the thickness or many different parameters but he still had access to gestural data and we processed everything. So for example, here you have an example. We gather intersecting strokes together or close ones, extract the center of the shape, find main axis and convex various, compute various parameters. So I will just show you what, how it works in practice. So we based our implementation to, to get the data in open music and I think it's interesting because we use a new reactive extension of open music, which make me go back on the previous talk so that open music is now a bit reactive and can each time you edit something, you can access the new, you have a new updated visualization of the data and can even listen directly to what's going on. So dispatch is receiving OST messages and construct musical or open music objects from the data sent from the pen interface. And this will be the available data captured. So I will write, it's hard for you to see. I will write one shape here, and you will see the data appearing on this patch directly. So let's fix this one. So I've just been writing here. So each time I'm adding a new stroke, it's computing everything. So we could retrieve all the data. We have thickness envelope, main axis, a pitch computed in this score space. We have various, the area, we, we try to compute which type of form it is. The composer wanted to distinguish between six different types so that he could make classification and everything. So we have two different levels of, of data. This one is really for one shape. And on the, the top of the score here, I have 
registered and recorded all the data from the composers. So when I use this one, it will send all the data from all the shapes. And so he was also interested in classifying and organizing among shapes, which for him was really interesting to have which forms I write first so that he could classify among types to generate rhythms or whatever. So that's where the raw data we, we gave to the composers and he worked on several patches. So I will just show a few of them. So maybe the first one would be this one. Let's go. So here what we are doing, we're taking the perimeter of a shape and try and trying to convert it directly as a polyphonic sequence. So I will just use one existing shape here. So what's going on is because all these box are framed with red here, they are reactive ones. So each time there is a change anywhere, it propagates the notification and then we reevaluate the results. So here at last I connected the play box. So the notification does help to hear and so I could directly play the results. And so from paper-based interaction, I could just write and listen to the forms, compare them, try with new data several times and then change a bit the patch, adapt the parameters and then go back and forth between really trying and improving my handwritten input or exploring what could be the sonic results and then changing the patches if I'm not satisfied and because it's written on paper, I could always access the previously written data. So somehow the exploration is not lost in the computer process or whatever. So let's have a second one. Ah, yeah, this one is a bit different. So in, in total, I think he used six different processes, one for each form. So this one is using a different feature. We're computing the speed of the gesture. So I will try to illustrate that by writing really slowly at the beginning and then finishing really quickly. So what we're controlling here is a Doppler effect. So basically, I was slow before, so the frequency shift is not that not that important, and at the end, it starts to be really important. So that's a way of sonifying the gestural data also. And so we explore many times with many shapes, that kind of patches. So now I think I would just go back quickly. Okay, so I have many other one, and maybe you, if you want to try, that's completely possible. Uh, what I wanted to say then, okay, so that's it for now. What would be the, the perspective and what are the missing features for the composer? The, this pen does not capture pressure precisely, nor the inclination. And obviously for having calligraphic gestures, that really is something important. And on the original score, that's pretty obvious that pressure was really something important and the inclination, the way you do your hand, even the way you grip the pen might be important so that still thing we were interested in capturing. And the, so there is this also this process of co-adaptation between the composer and the system because it's interactive and interactive and on paper, he could both interact and refine his unwritten input, then change this process. But because it's stored with the ink, he could refine everything many times. And so th this concept of having live interaction with the memory of what you just did, I think is interesting for composition in general. So no, I just maybe, do we still have time? Yeah, okay. five minutes. Five minutes, so what they could do is just show other thing you could do with interactive paper. So for example, okay, I have other pages, so we, I'm working on tools to let you create paper interfaces. And <coughs> other include various, so this one is really related to Philippe Leroux, composition process, but we have many other ones, so I have a different page. What is interesting with this technology I'm writing on this page, but it will be different than this one because we use a different pattern of dots. So this is the second page I have. So these are, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with, but these are tone networks. So basically we lay out the pitches in space we're using different uh, harmonic relationships or intervallic structures. And so here what you'd be able is to play directly by drawing a path. So I'm drawing here, there should be a player somewhere showing. Okay, and then the pass I just wrote is interpreted as a melody. And so again, because I let ink on paper, I could replay it. And listen again, what is it? Or play it as a chord. So it's a bit 
complex chords. So this was inspired by another composer practice that used tone networks to draw paths and make things. And what is interesting here is that you could process geometrical transformations on many other operations. So we also have other sets of score containers, curves containers, or sliders that all keep track of what you're doing. So after a certain point, it becomes really unusable. That's one of the main limitations, but you could still refresh the data and print a new version with existing data. OK, I think I'm done for now. Maybe I will just quickly show a short video about the composer process, or just an example of what we did during the, the work with him. And the piece had been premiered uh, two weeks ago, and you can still listen to it on the Radio France website. So this is an excerpt of the original manuscript, and we'll just move it further. Because we have rehearsals from some the composer created with the singer. So, <coughs> so here, interacting. So here the composer asks the singer to mimic electronic sounds he produced. <laughs> you get the idea. <laughs> so it was a really funny and exploratory project. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.